and welcome back to the CSS Podcast. Today, we're easing you into a new CSS function that can take any number of parameters you want. Endless points for endless fun. <laughs> it's a delightfully simple concept with powerful results. I'm talking about the timing function called linear. Yes, don't be fooled by its name either because it's capable of way more things than linear interpolation. Well, it does in fact move linearly through the points you just specify in the function, but with enough of them, your eye can easily be fooled into seeing very fluid and dynamic motion, like springs, bounces, squishes, squashes, boings, zings, flips, flungs, flops, plops, wobbles, and wiggles, and so many more. Wow. The browser support has been <laughs> its baseline newly available since December 2023, and it's just cool to note that Firefox did it first. They saw it and were like, boom. Are those names from open props? Uh, two of them are. Fling, boing, zing, flung, <laughs> flop, flop. Yeah, I'm channeling my inner uh, Dr. Seuss, I suppose. Yeah. So while you might not call it boing, zing, and fling, you might be more familiar with timing functions using the keywords like ease, ease out, or ease in out. And you might also be familiar with steps or the cubic bezier functions, other functions for controlling interpolation of properties in CSS. So this is how things animate. If you're not, check out our Learn CSS course on web.dev slash learn slash CSS, where we talk about some of these things. Yeah. So the new linear function enters the game by by breaking out of the four parameter cubic bezier function and allows any number of points to be specified. The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> like, we it's need it's to a test Mean Girls this. reference. Oh, it is. Oh. <laughs> hey, nice. You coming in with the movie I, references. I got some references too. I like it. Um, the limit does not exist, Adam. Cool. So I checked in with Jake about this, and it is true that there is no limit, but at some point there would be performance issues. I don't know if anyone's done a study on what that point is. So just be reasonable, I guess, within reason, or do the study, because I'm curious. What is the point at which you start to face weird performance issues? Yeah, I mean, a browser crash, if you could crash the browser with this, then... Uh, which is what people were doing with the billion laughs attack. Generally, we put in guardrails for stuff like this. So maybe it just needs someone to make a demo that crashes every tab that opens it. And then the browsers will go, hey, we don't like that. And, and, and they'll put a limit on it. I don't know what the limit would be, though. You'd have to figure out something reasonable. But I mean, in most of the ex examples that I build, I try to keep it as low as possible, right? Because I don't want there to be a whole bunch of bytes over the wire just to have a cool springy animation. And usually I can get a really good one for 20. Oh, really? That's it? Yeah, that's it. And if and if you're really feeling like uh, you need more fidelity and maybe the duration is a very long time or something, maybe up to 50 or 100. But I, I, don't, I don't imagine needing many more than that. But I don't know. Maybe someone's got a – it hmm. boings and then it flings and then it flops and it zops and it's all built into one. I have no idea. <laughs> Um, anyway, in general, the more points you specify, you do get a smoother result. So like the game is, like I was just saying, how do I achieve a nice lifelike spring effect with as few points as possible? But also, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Like we've shared it's for interpolation and that it's a timing function. But, you know, we give them the more technical breakdown of how this function works. Sure. So the linear function accepts any number of stops, like we mentioned, and they are comma separated. So each stop is a single number value between zero and one. So linear without the function, just linear goes from zero to one. It is a linear easing function for an animation. You probably have seen that and used that. But when you open up the parentheses for linear, that's where you could have any number of stops in between. So in between each stop, the interpolation is done in a linear way. So that's why it's still called linear. It's a linear easing function, because as you go between each, you're kind of going straight line from one to the other. So you can have a function with three stops, like linear 0, 0, 0.251, which would go from 0 to the 0 0.25 numeric number to 1 at the end. That's the place in the animation that you're moving to. Or you could have 300 linear stops, which Adam said he wouldn't recommend. <laughs> but <laughs> I want to see what happens. And so this can emulate what feels like a curve when you have a bunch of these stops, because while it is linear, you have so many of them. And as they get closer together, you can sort of create these faux curves. By default, these stops are evenly distributed, but you can also specify their placement, which is similar to how you would do that with a gradient. So you could have something like uh, linear and open parentheses zero comma zero point two five 
space 75%, comma 1, and this would have the 0.25 mark of the animation at the 75% time point instead of the 50% time point, which would be like the even distribution. That's how you would do that, similar to a gradient. And the first and last items you might have noticed here don't have 0% and 100%. That's just assumed for the first number and the last number. And this is really useful. It solves multiple problems. So we had a lot of feature requests that folks were asking for, for multiple types of easing functions, all sorts of them, boing, zoings, bounces, flings, that could transition from one type of easing into another. So also the desire to have easings build on each other was one of them. And then Jake Archibald proposed a simpler solution by just reusing linear in a functional format the linear easing function that required far fewer rules and math and new things to be added to the browser that were more specific. And you could instead define a more complex easing result with a bunch of simpler ones. Yep. The trade-off was that the authoring of these is bizarre. It's not very human to handwrite these. And so Jake made a tool, which we'll get into in a second. But the proposals were wild coming from like After Effects, where After Effects can do really amazing things between two points. And it's the way that it can ease. And Jake was like, no, let's just do this. And he had demos that made it look. He's like, here's squishes and here's bounces and here's squashes. And they do really well. And I like metaphors and to make things visual. And so one of the ways um, I think about this, and maybe it'll help someone out there, is like a constellation or a connect the dots picture. So like straight lines are drawn between each of the dots, right? And so when there's only a few points, the result of the design is pretty low fidelity and it takes your imagination to fill it in. So if you've only got a few points in your easing, it's probably still gonna look kind of linear, but you increase the number of points and you can create uh, some things that are have much higher fidelity results. And even though there's like really dinky straight lines between each of these, there's enough dots in there that you can make an arc and you can make a circle. That's what linear does. It stitches a bunch of linear interpolation together into what can look like a high res springy bounce effect. It's pretty cool. What you can't just immediately visualize linear zero comma zero point nine four seventeen percent one point one five twenty four percent thirty percent. 1.02, 43%, You can't just visualize that? <laughs> no. No, I cannot. Especially over audio. <laughs> yeah, these can get really complex, especially if you have like multiple curves. And in that example, it sort of even uh, went outside of the linear bounds, like an overbounce. So there's just a lot you can do here. Yeah, it's like reading SVG path data. That's good. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Yeah. Some people have memorized that. They're like, M to 20 and L to 22. And you're like, whoa, that's that's a skill. What does that mean? D equals. No, I used to be able to sort of be able to kind of read it because, and I'll tell you why, there was this book all about like, hand authoring SVG that I did an audiobook translation for just voluntarily because I was really into like audio versions of everything. Yeah. And so I like read the whole book and then I sort of understood it. And then that knowledge just went out of my head a month later. <laughs> yeah. It's been my quest twice in my career to be able to, because there's so many cool superpowers if you can memorize the SVG yeah. syntax, because right, you've got like animations along curves, you can draw lines and there's really cool. And I just seen so many neat animation potentials, but yeah, it's just, it just disappears Read the out book. of my brain as soon as- I'll link it in the show notes. Okay. So it's, uh, it's like constellations. It's uh, lots of dots with straight lines in between each of them. And if it's so cryptic and unapproachable, how are people supposed to use it? What, uh, what are we supposed to do? Just give up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few ways that you can do it, ranging from, you know, DIY and free or ready to go. I mean, you could ask AI. Oh, yeah. But good luck. <laughs> it's just going to make something up. AI is just notoriously bad at CSS. It is. Especially modern CSS. It doesn't have any good examples to learn from either right now. Right. We're going to have to go seed it with some good linear examples. Yeah. So speaking of good linear examples, you can use some pre-made linear functions off the shelf from a CSS library, like, for example, Adam's library, Open Props, which provides a few different springs and bounces that use linear. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you can also use a really convenient generator tool that we've sort of been hinting at, uh, which was built by Jake and Adam. Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam has no idea what this tool is. So give us a rundown of how to use it. Sure. Uh, I was the designer. Jake was like, I'm building this thing and it needs to look pretty. Would you help me? And I'm like, cool, I can do that. 
The tool spits out linear easing functions. So it's a generator. You visit it, it's got a preview uh, and all sorts of other cool things that can sort of help you establish a good linear function that you basically just copy and paste into your project. So like we said, people aren't going to be handwriting this. So Jake wanted to provide a tool that could help people um, use it right away. And it allows providing the desired easing as a JavaScript function or as an SVG curve. So with that as the input, it provides a visual representation of the effect that you're going to get, and it has levers for reducing the number of points and adjusting how much rounding is happening in those values. So you get two different ways to sort of reduce the complexity of the function itself, because otherwise it gets into really bizarre floaty numbers that are like 0.22069493. And you're like, how about it's just 022 whatever you're like does it really need to be and so but the thing is is the tool gives you these tools to adjust these because depending on the length of the animation and what you're going for it can make a difference in terms of the fidelity and so this mm. is the game you play on the site it's a generator but it's also a game no it's not a game but i mean <laughs> anyway you see what i mean the game is like how much can you simplify and reduce while still achieving the same visual result that you want so this is what I meant earlier when I was like teasing that the more points uh, there are that can fool the eye into seeing a more rich effect. But the reality is that it's just a set of these linear points and it's like moving the connect the dots picture further and further away from you. The higher resolution it is, the less you notice that those are straight lines between each and they start to look more like arcs, which is kind of cool. There's also a duration thing that you can change on there. It turns out duration is very important mm. in getting the effect you want. Yeah, it's, it's really convenient, too, because I've always wanted to visualize these curves in a tool like Illustrator, where you could create an SVG, just like draw it out. And with this tool, you can just pop into the tool and it converts that SVG from Illustrator that you can literally highlight, copy and paste into a linear easing function. And it's sort of a way to visualize this code that made it real to me. And then the fidelity adjustment is interesting, too, because we were talking about how there is a point at which there's a performance degradation but we don't know what the point is <laughs> so just you know give it a try and see what feels smooth to you oh yeah what is that url it's, i think it's cleverly named linear-easing-generator.netlify.app so yep go check that out y'all and the link will also be in our show notes so there you have it you can try to write your own Good luck. Uh, snag some pre-made <laughs> linear functions from Open Props or another library, or use the generator to make it easier. All up to you. Nice. I do want a side fun note about the Open Props bounces. So there's bounces and springs. Uh, the springs aren't very surprising. They're going to give you exactly what you want. I think those are the easiest ones to get started with, too. They're really easy to use anyway but the bounces are kind of fun there's five of them which is a classic kind of open props thing it gives you five strengths or five different variants of the thing like it's just ease bounce one ease bounce two but what was cool is the number in the variable equates to the number of bounces you see in the result so if you want the ball to bounce three times one two three and then be done you would use bounce three and so on and so i thought that was fun ah i see i see what you did there with the naming yeah, it's like, uh, let's make it easy. Yeah, I like that. And then I got one more tip for working with linear, which I kind of briefly just explained, but duration is really, really important. And you're going to notice something while you're using this. So the visual quality is very tightly coupled to duration and you'll see duration as a lever in the tool, but you'll be surprised at how long the duration is that you're going to use on these animations. Because traditionally, you might use 250 milliseconds or 0.3 seconds or 100 milliseconds. I think a lot of people shoot for shorter durations of animation so that they complete quick. But you're going to notice with springs and bounces, you're going to be over the one second duration very often. Mm. Don't be surprised if you need to increase your duration to get the realistic feel of some physics out of this linear function. That is very true and a very good point. I normally do like 0 0.25 seconds for my quick animations in and out, just like an opacity change or something like swiping off. But if you have an animation that has more motion to it, that would feel really rushed and unnatural if it was that short. So that's a good call. Nice. You just remind me too. Um, careful with using springs and bounces on opacity. It just usually looks. It'll go in and out. <laughs> yeah, it looks terrible. It, like flickers at you, and you're like, "Ew, I didn't want to." Maybe you want some stars shining. Yeah. Don't judge, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> As always, check out the show notes for the links to all these helpers. There's also a great article by Bromis on web.dev that covers this 
a bit more in depth and talks about the syntax, has some nice visual examples to go along with it and talk more about what these numbers mean on a path. And you can also snag some easings from that too. So if you were a little bit lost in the linear connect the dots stuff, definitely go check that out. That Bramus guy is pretty cool. I got to say, we should have him on the show or something. We should have him on the show. What a great idea. Hmm, I wonder hmm. if that's planned or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. That's all we have for today. And if you got any CSS questions, you know where to go. Tweet them at us with that hashtag CSS podcast, and we can't wait to read them. Yes, and you can find me on Twitter at UNA, that's at UNA, at UNA. And I'm at Argyle Inc., and that's I-N-K on the end, and your question could help a lot of people. If you like the show, please give us a review on whatever podcast app you're using, or share this podcast with a friend or a coworker. That's how people find the show, and that means that we could make more shows for you. Yeah, we can continue to be silly and share CSS at the same time. Make the show. Well, thanks, y'all. We appreciate you listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.